And then the third ingredient, God has given us a sound mind. A sound mind. That phrase means a self-controlled mind. It also carries the idea of being a balanced mind. You know what happens when we get fearful? We get off balance. We start imagining the worst, and our mind just goes crazy, and we get all these weird thoughts in our mind and things that will not even happen, but we think about them, and all that stuff comes flooding in, and basically we are out of control, and we're off balance. Remember last week's message about mind games? I've already mentioned it this morning. Fear is based on what we think might happen to us. That's why we need a sound mind. A balanced mind. We need to be able to think clearly, especially when we're under the gun and the pressure is on and there are fearful circumstances all around us. May I give you some advice? Just something I've learned from experience. In the school of hard knocks, and I've got a graduate degree from that university, I want you to know. What have I learned? I've learned this. Don't make any important decisions when you're fearful because you'll probably make the wrong one. When you're gripped by fear and your mind is imbalanced and you're not really thinking clearly and you really have forgotten about God's promises and presence and you're looking at the situation, don't make a major decision at that particular point. Well, what should I do? Slow down. Pull aside. Hit your knees. Pray and take some more time. And then when you see things more clearly and more in balance, then make that decision. Usually when I make a quick decision, I make a bad decision. It almost always happens. So we need to make sure that fear is not a part of the equation. The phrase used here, sound mind, literally means self-control or self-discipline. When something looks foreboding, when something looks frightening, don't jump to conclusions. Don't read more into it than ought to be there. Don't lose your perspective. Don't think it's a lost cause. Don't throw in the towel. Don't walk away. Don't do that. No matter what happens, and this is what I'm living by right now, I tell you. No matter what happens in my life or in your life, no matter what happens in the church, no matter what happens in the nation, no matter what happens anywhere in the world, it's all an opportunity for God to do something tremendous even if I don't understand it. I'm going through stuff I don't understand right now. I can't comprehend it. I can't explain it. I can't put it down in a formula on paper and say, here's why that happened to me. I cannot do that. Some of you are going through physical circumstances, health issues, just like that. And you can't explain that. It makes no sense at all. But at the same time, I know this, that it's an opportunity for God to do something tremendous in my life and in your life. And I'm not going to get the glory for it, but he will. He will. Whatever happens, he will. That's what we've got to keep our sight on. That's what we have to keep our focus on that particular thing. Let me ask you this morning, what's your biggest fear? I mean, if you had to categorize it right now and say, number one, the number one fear in my life is fill in the blank. What would you put? What is the greatest fear of your life? Whatever your greatest fear is, I can tell you the answer to it. The answer is faith. Faith. Forsaking all, I trust Him. Forsaking all, I trust Him. And here's what I found. Faith and fear can't dwell in the same heart. And if you've got that forsaking all, I trust Him kind of attitude, I tell you, fear doesn't stand a chance in your life. Oh, it may show up occasionally, but it won't stay around because you've got F A I forsaking all I trust him if you've never been saved this morning and maybe it's because of fear maybe intimidation would you come and say I'm going to take that step I believe the Lord's spoken to me pastor buddy and I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior and I want to be a Christian I want to go to heaven when I die I sure don't want to go to the other place would you come this morning and let faith dispel the fear that's in your heart Maybe this morning you'd like to serve the Lord. Maybe God's got a calling on your life. I still believe in an old-fashioned calling. And maybe God's calling you to a specific area of ministry. And maybe there's been fear there. What if, what if, what if, what if? Why don't you just step out today and say, Lord, I don't know the answers to all the what ifs, but forsaking all, I trust Him. 
And Lord, I'm going to come and I'm going to commit my life to you in service. I'm going to commit my life to you to do what you're telling me that you want me to do, even though I don't understand all the different aspects of it. Would you come?